Okay, Ruler, settle down. Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get pre-orders of all the upcoming Force of Will sets, as well as releases of previous sets after they come out. CCGprime.com with over 100,000 Force of Will singles, as well as out-of-print boxes from the past, and TCG accessories, as well as FowlLibrary.com, a wonderful resource for deck lists, article discussions, and more. Check them out at FowlLibrary.com, as well as these amazing patrons. Special thanks to guest lecturer members Fight Ramen and Shu Kong Fu. Thank you for your support. Class is in session. Hey there, rulers. DMO73 here, bringing you the feature match for the week. Finally getting into Game of Gods Reloaded. On the left, we have Tyler Tompkins playing his first draft of Dark Sphere Dante. And on the right, I am playing my first draft of Regalia Alice. This is looking like it's going to be pretty fun. These are kind of the two... Um, new rulers that people are kind of most intrigued by or at least the ones that we've talked about before are generating the most inherent value off of every flip so we'll have to see which ruler reigns supreme whether it be dante and his newfound seven deadly sins or alice bringing in the regalia um and throwing ius at people <laughs> Overall, the Dark Sphere deck has kind of, from what we've seen, has a couple ways that it can be built, which is like the Exodia style, where you're trying to do seven deadly sins to win, or a more aggressive style, where you're trying to just like use um, flip almost every turn, use Dark Charlotte, lose Lucifer, lose the Crawler and the Chimera to just really kind of push in aggression. So we'll have to see which version uh, Tyler is playing here and, and how it succeeds against Alice. There's a couple, Alice doesn't necessarily have a couple different versions, it's more just like how many of her different threats do you want to try to board into the main deck. Um, it's all pretty much a very similar kind of approach, um, revolving around getting Al getting Regalia and then using them for different benefits, whether that be Tales of Fantasia or the pump up or drawing cards or things like that. So going into first turn here, let's see how it goes. Doing mulligans. Ragstone turn one for me. Strong start as always. It's obviously awful turn one, but in the darks in the mirror, um, his only like. Well, that's I guess that's Dark Charlotte could be a really powerful turn one at coin here because Dark Charlotte by herself gets to have enough symbol skills to be able to swing on the turn she enters and do Excalibur Fallen. Um, but ultimately, back to back, we're both just playing Ragstones. So we're just going to have to jump in to turn two and both start taking action. So it's kind of good for both of us here. Um, certainly, it would have been real bad uh, if Excalibur kept Fallen had just called IU um, because then... Um, every single version would be gone, uh, and that'd be kind of the biggest heavy hitting card out of the Alice deck right away, but we'll have to see what comes next. Ultimately seeming like not a ton of options here. No IU or anything else like that. We are going to see a Dante enters the Game of Gods. Here, choosing to do the mode to pay 1,500 life and draw three cards. So really digging deep makes me think that maybe just the hand isn't that great. Using the coin to do that. Um, does hit the 6H stone next. And we do see it looks like our first order out here. Oh no, just a Dark Sphere of Asmodeus. Interesting to see Dark Spheres being played. May I mean I guess Dark Sphere of Asmodeus is kind of the one you can play in the main, um, mainly because it only costs one as opposed to the others, which you're gonna probably want to grab off of the Dante order more often than not. We see a tea party. That's gonna be a big card moving forward here, cast um, at the end of his turn. 
to be able to start giving white resonators quick cast. Um, this is a huge big card for a lot of white based decks. The, the flexibility of being able to give a resonator that normally doesn't have quick cast, quick cast, especially when you can also order it to make it uncancelable, feels really good. It's a really good way to get a lot of value off of it. We're going to, I believe, uh, just move to recovery there. Call stone and order out a Dark Alice in Ma'at, I believe. Yeah, so Dark Alice in Ma'at is normally a villain's, but if you're playing Alice, it can be a Tails, um, which is huge. And it puts, this is gonna put three enter effects on this deck. The first one to look at his hand, or to generate a regalia and draw a card off of the order. The second one to look at his hand and grab a resonator. And the third one to look at his hand and grab a non-resonator while also getting a regalia. A darkness regalia. So in response, we're going to see a response order of a Lucifer fallen one wing or defeated one wing. So this is going to immediately kill itself, um, but it will kill my dark Alice before my enter effects resolve and does this nice little life point swing. Um, 500 is is nothing to shake at. And then also he'll get to grab a dark sphere, kills my dark Alice before uh, she gets to survive on the field. And then I have to discard a card, which doesn't make a, it's not hugely detrimental because I'm also going to draw a card. See, I discard the flashing smile there, but then we start resolving my regalia effects. So make a darkness regalia, get to grab a resonator. We're going to go ahead and grab or a spell. We're going to go ahead and grab the seven deadly sins. Then we're going to steal a resonator. We're going to get the only one we can, which is a crawler. And then we generate a white regalia and draw a card. Now keep in mind, just for the sake of you or who are watching, those are very clearly original regalia um we're just using them to represent the regalia tokens because i like being flashy so it's not zero cost regalia they're just being used as the tokens and then we just pass turn so normally this would be a, probably a pretty good spot for tyler especially considering you know they only have one white will the problem comes from that tea party tea party suddenly being able to recover a stone means that I'm actually representing two will, um, and also the ability to quick cast something, which could include something in the sense like another Dark Alice, because she is a white resonator, so she would get quick cast. See, a second Dark Sphere of Amadeus. So now all of his J rulers are getting plus four, plus four, just before they even hit the field. Not much in that hand there. Looks like a lot of spells, couple uh, Excalibur Fallen, which he can still use even as a spell um, for a removal. We are gonna see that down comes just Tea Party to recover a stone, draw a card. And then what we're gonna do is order out a Charlotte chasing light. Um, so I get the same, she has an enter effect, which can't shoot anything he controls because it all has eternal, but she will generate a regalia off the back, which can be a water regalia and draw a card. Now I'll draw for turn. And then before recovery, use Charlotte's effects for the water regalia to draw another card. So yeah, you draw a lot of cards in the Alice deck. It's kind of its whole thing. <laughs> Call stone for hit a six age stone. Finally gonna try to swing in. Currently Charlotte's sitting at being a 10-10 because of the three regalia we control. But we could maybe go further. Seeing if we maybe want to get aggressive here. We only have one six age stone, so going in for the aggression feels pretty good. Definitely feels like we can get a free 10 damage here, especially since he's also paying cards that pay his own life. Anytime we can, you know, get him lower on life here puts us in a better position because it makes some of his cards just not do as much, you know, stealing some of the value from those Dante enters. It looks like he has two of them in hand. Um, it does have spot removal, but it doesn't affect the Charlotte because she's a J ruler. Just deciding if we maybe want to try to get a little bit more advantage off of her before we go in and down comes the deep blue soldier huge card for alice on enter it's going to be able to generate a regalia of our choice we're going to pick fire so now we're up to four so it's charlotte swinging for 11.
going to attempt to try to go into combat. And as that happens, we're going to see a world of Amadeus to bring back that Lucifer. And he does have the ability to immediately... Oh, and draws a card. Nope. I don't know why he drew a card there. Maybe just drew for turn. We're going to see that Lucifer get used. Another life point swing down to 3530. Gets to kill the Charlotte. Oh, no, not ordering. Choosing not to order. Just going to just going to cast in the Lucifer. Guess I chose not to block with the or chose not to swing with the Charlotte there. Interesting choice. I think it wouldn't have been... Well, I don't have the tea party, so maybe not. Being able to... Keep things controlled with the Charlotte. Just being active as she is feels pretty, pretty good here. So another Dante enters the Game of Gods coming down here to do both modes, I believe. So he's going to make the Lucifer very large. And he's also going to pay 1,500 life to draw three more. I don't hate the idea of playing like prideful rule in this deck. It's very easy with Dante enters and like feeling comfortable taking a swing, single swing from your opponent just to be down below two grand life. Uh, and then, you know, you're, you've got these tokens to be able to keep yourself up with. You've got Lucifer to be able to go back up above 2000 if you need. Um, that to me feels like certainly some tech that he could play uh, pretty effectively. Going to go ahead and draw a card before deciding what we're going to block with. Alice enters the game of gods here to remove all of Lucifer's abilities, so he doesn't have those keywords, and he also won't make me discard a card when he dies. He is still very large because of the dark spheres. Um, so we'll just throw our... Um, Deep blue under the bus. We're saying that's fine. We're going to be able to bring that back later. All good. And then we're seeing a three Dark Spheres and two for an ordered Amadeus. So this is pretty cool. It gets to rip. It gets to rip two cards out of my hands. Gets to get to another Dark Sphere, which is great. Um, he's sitting on the God's Art of Wrath. So that means he can kill the Charlotte whenever he wants. Uh, and because it, it's unchaseable. And if I have any other Charlottes in hand, it just gets rid of them completely. Plus, it's a 3k, 3k beater. Right now, it's a 34, 34 beater. And at the same time, any damage that he would take gets redirected to Amadeus instead. Um, so... Him being at low life this is another reason why I think cards like Prideful Rule could find their way into Dark Sphere. Because if you get Amadeus out, then like your life being low isn't a big deal because Amadeus gets to soak up damage for you instead. One of our two discards is going to be a Deep Blue, the other one being an Avenger of Amadeus, which is a cute little nod for a, um, the Tales of Fantasia spell. Maybe we'll get to see that later in the match. Choosing not to use the God's Art right now does get Belial Sphere, so now Amadeus is flying, so she can block the Charlotte whenever she wants. Charlotte's definitely not going to swing into a 34-34, uh, because her ability to prevent damage doesn't prevent damage from combat, so Charlotte will still die. Ultimately, interesting play here to choose to unorder... Use the God's Art here to unorder the Charlotte. I think in this position, it probably would have been better to just let me sit on the Charlotte. It does mean that his stuff's not going to recover, but if he needs his stuff to recover, he could do it. I think there's a the world where you wait until the end of my turn to do the God's Art so that, like, I can't commit unless I have a tea party like this. I can't commit to another order. Um... Whereas this, this way he gives me the most opportunities to make plays as possible. Like with this Ayu. 
like if he had waited to unord like he did some of my work for me by unordering uh and also like if he had a way to kill the charlotte then you know getting rid of the ayu would have felt being able to un um do the god's art for the ayu feels really good So right now she's going to get to produce double white. She's going to get to draw me a card off of the regalia or off of the um, off of the order trigger. She's going to get to have a lot of floating wheel. My regalia, my white regalia can tap for any color. I can also pump her up at this point to being a 40, 40 or sorry, plus 40, plus 40 um, because I have five different, uh, different regalia. Um, and I have a bunch of floating wheel to be able to play around with. So now it's a matter of, do I have a way to get to swing in for lethal? Because she has swiftness and flying since I have two regalia. So trying to figure out the sequencing here to see what might be in hand. Looking at Tyler's hand, there's not really a lot that he's gonna be able to do. Um, using one of the floating wide to play Arita Expansion Linosfaria, this is a real nail in the coffin because now none of the stuff on his side has any abilities during my turn, which means that uh, he can just take the damage. And also his um, Amadeus does not have flying anymore. So paying two, uh, using the other floating white and two more, we're gonna go ahead and cast Tales of Fantasia. So this is the big kind of triple color spell. What it does is it lets me reveal X times two, where X is the number of regalia I control cards from my deck. So this will be 10. Uh, I can grab a addition, a resonator, and a chance and cast all of them for free. Um, not the best hits here. Um, you can cast the alternative cards because they are technically chance. So we'll cast um, the w Wings of Light and Darkness from the Lumia card as to get rid of the Lucifer, as well as we're going to grab Prissia, Derelict Duelist, or Dangerous Duelist, I think is the actual, yeah, Dangerous Duelist, um, to be able to have a, another body on board. Could have grabbed the Charlotte, but ultimately we just kind of want to play as many Alice cards as possible because we can. Trying to use two more white will to pump up Alice to being a 40-40. Thinking about maybe doing that. Going in for 700 here because she has swiftness. She does have pierce as well. Knowing full well that this is probably not going to do much. Um, she probably just blocks with the Amadeus, but if anything, it's like, hey, let's just try to make you use as many cards as possible. And looking at that hand with only one available will, there's not really much that he will be able to do. There is a world where um, with Linosfaria, because he has that Deus Ex enters the game of gods, he could have used that on Amadeus to like timestamp gain her the abilities again so that she could then block this iu um but instead i think we mis misinterpreted what happens with linosvaria and we just flash in um a fallen angel or witch of the fallen kingdom which doesn't stop me uh at all and so the, the damage from um alice is going to connect through and we're going to find our find the lethal perch to pump her up uh she'll be a grand total of 54 damage um when all is said and done or 59 damage when all is 49 damage when all is said and done <laughs> sorry going into game two here you can see kind of how the alice deck finds its purchase for lethal Seeing if the Dante deck can maybe be a little bit more aggressive. I think the Dark Alice kind of hurt. And I also think um, Little Svaria certainly hurt a lot. 
Um, there were some sequencing things there with like the Dante enters as well as like I said the because um, if he had if he hadn't Godarded the Amadeus, then I couldn't have made that play at all because the Ayu couldn't have been ordered. Um, so that feels pretty good for me. Or feels pretty good for Tyler. And I think it's just a matter of learning the decks. We're still very, very fresh on these decks. Looks like two Lucifers and Amadeus. After a Callstone Pass. First turn, six stage stone. Certainly gives some avenues here. One thing to note about Lucifer fallen one wing is that, or defeated one wing, is that if there's nothing on your opponent's side of the field to target with Lucifer, he doesn't have to kill himself on his order. So we're going to see a Amadeus, or Asmodeus, Dark Sphere, a Tea Party during my recovery. Going to go ahead and go for that Dark Alice. This is going to look very familiar to the previous turns. Once again, stacking. The bottom being Regalia draw a card, the middle being steal a resonator, and the top being look at his hand to grab a chant and remove it from the game. In response, we're going to see, because you know it's going to die, an immediate ordered Lucifer, which is going to up five, down five, kill the Dark Alice, get him a Dark Sphere, uh, gets the Drain, which is an interesting choice here. Uh, to go for a second. I think I, I mean, that makes sense to try to gain as much life as possible. Look at his hand and grab a chant. I do have to discard. I'll discard a tea party. That's fine. I already have one in RFG, so I don't necessarily need a second one. Tyler is deciding if he wants to do anything in response to the Dark Alice effect. Going to burn coin. I think realizing that I, I think he can't actually here because he recognizes I don't I think he's misplaying here and using the coin twice on accident. Yeah, so I think this is why it's helpful to have very clear indicators of what your energize is because I think he thinks he still has energize and I also think that I think he still has energize even though he just used his energize to play the the Lucifer. So technically he doesn't have a way to respond here, but it looks like he thinks he might be trying to cast Dante enters the game of gods to draw more cards to give me a harder choice of what to call. So yeah, he does cast that Dante Enters that he can't technically cast. Uh, burns himself for 15. Also uses a World of Amadeus to bring back the Lucifer to give me him me as few choices for the spell as possible, but as many choices as possible for the Resonator. Choosing the chant first, we grab the uh, Demonic World um, Edition, and then we're gonna go ahead and say we don't want to deal with the Amadeus. Um, because it's annoying. So we're going to let him keep the rest of it. So leave it with three Lucifers in hand, which is quite a lot, to be honest, but ultimately um, feeling pretty okay with being able to manage them, knowing that full well I'm probably not going to be able to resolve um, many Resonators. Um, so I might have to go for kind of something big. Uh, to be able to push through that damage and I also have to be careful because you know it's gonna drain me like they even just as resonators they are a very good drain source double checking verifying for Tyler so he makes sure he knows how the Lucifer works here if he wants to try to order um, that's the one thing about this dark sphere list is like you want to try to order kind of every single turn if possible and Lucifer is a really good card for that um, just like spot removal order get a dark sphere move on because um, it really helps to fuel the seven deadly sins combo it really helps to fuel um, 
getting into um, Amadeus faster. And so exactly what's going to happen here. Like we're going to order that Lucifer out. It doesn't have anything on his my side to destroy. So Lucifer just gets to sit on board uh, and exist, which is get him a Dark Sphere, gets him a Call Stone. Overall feels pretty good. Now he has this flying ordered card that if I can't, uh, if I try to swing any blocks, I lose a card, which feels awful. Looks like he was thinking about maybe going for a seven deadly si or a, a um, Dante answers the game of gods here, ultimately choosing just to play crawler through the cracks of time. Thankfully, he can use his two dark spheres to be able to cast that card. And now that guy has plus two, plus two and drain and bane. Going to use tea party at the end of his turn and then order into a Ayu. To get another regalia, produce some will and draw some cards. Get a water regalia, draw a card, produce two will. Use one of those two will through Ayu to draw another card. Use the other white will to cast Alice Enters the Game of Gods. Remove the ability from his Dante. Draw another card. Get another regalia. Finally go into my turn. Draw for turn. And then just for good measure, we're going to go ahead and cast another Alice Enters the Game of Gods using the regalia. Thanks to Ayu to be able to get the fifth regalia and turn off his Lucifer for the turn. One, two, three. Gonna cast that Tales of Fantasia. Doesn't have to be cast during my turn because it has quick cast, but the thought is he only has two cards right now, so let's go ahead and just get as much value as possible. Um, do see another Tales of Fantasia in the 10, which means I can kind of cascade. You can use Tales of Fantasia to cast Tales of Fantasia. Um, so I'm gonna get Linosfaria, which will draw me a card, and then there's that Avenger of Amadeus. Nice big 10k, 10k Pierce Eternal. Um, play it on as one of in the deck just because sometimes you're going to hit it and you can cast it during your opponent's end phase and just go nuts. Second set of 10 here from the second t um, Tales of Fantasia. Choosing to cast a Dark Alice and letting the rest just go back into the bottom of the deck. Technically could rearrange them in any order that I wanted, ultimately just gonna let them go. So Dark Alice here is nice. She has the enter effect of even just being able to hit a Resonator out of his hand. We know the only two Resonators in his hand are two Lucifers, so it hits one of the Lucifers. Now we could use the, um, well, no, I don't think at this point we have enough will to be able to push for lethal with Dark, with Alice. Or with Ayu. So we're just going to pass. But we are threatening um, a 10k, 10k, uh, <laughs> Piercy Boy. So saying like, hey, uh, your Lucifers aren't going to be able to drain me as much. So we're pretty safe. We've got a solid blocker. We've got Little Sfaria to keep things controlled. Um, got some cards in my hand there. Uh, or a full of Grippa cards. And telling him, you have one turn to do this. Now, this is a little risky because if he had... Uh, if he had an Amadeus, and this is one of the reasons why we grabbed the Amadeus earlier, if he has an Amadeus, then, like, he can crash in his Lucifer, or find a way to kill his own Lucifer, um, and then play the Amadeus, uh, and get rid of the, uh, the Avenger with its God Dart. But that's the other reason why we also didn't swing, is we wanted him to sit on a Lucifer. So, it's one of the things about, you know, I don't know if ever trying to order a lucifer to keep it around is a smart idea i think the fact that he kills himself uh and always destroys something is probably his best feature for the dante deck because it enables you to have so many other plays as opposed to as we've seen from order decks some order decks just struggle to unorder their own thing and want to be able to unorder um so that they can keep flipping over and over and over again i think dante is one such example Alice, on the other hand, I think is perfectly fine sitting on a single order if she can help it. Swinging in with the Lucifer, who is currently a 6-6 six, six with Drain and Bane. And flying. Flying. 
ultimately because we know we're threatening so much damage there's not really a big concern unless he decides to you know dante enters the game of gods to pump it up but even then only going to give it an extra plus four so 10 total um so we're just going to take it we're going to take the damage go down to 24 and let him take us up goes up to 41 has nothing quick cast here i mean he does have um does have the lucifer here but it's not going to do anything at that point And then the problem is when we go to my turn, even the, the Lucifer is not going to do much either. He could just cast the Dark Alice here to try to rip a card out of my hand, but the pressure on board is already threatening too much. So just draw for turn. Move to recovery. Call stone. And then go to combat and swing in with the Avenger, who has 10,000, 10,000 attack, and a 10,000 attack, and pierce. He goes to block with the Crawler. Crawler's going to die. Damage is going to go through. Crawler doesn't even get to kill him back. Even if he could kill him back, he's got Eternal, so it's fine. And that is going to be the game. So there you guys have it. That is the first drafts of these decks um, and kind of some critiques on how they should be played or kind of what kinds of cards you should be looking for, for sure. Um, be tuning in. Later this week, we will put up the Alice deck profile, and then probably next week early, we will put up the Dante deck profile because of the GP this weekend. Please check the link in the description to get signed up for the Games and Geek webcam Discord GP this weekend. Hope to see you there. We'll be streaming it. But until next time, this is DMO73 saying, class dismissed.